Welcome back. Let's go to Hong Kong now. And there's outrage around the world after more than 50 pro-democracy politicians and activists have been arrested. It's the most dramatic use yet of the draconian new security laws imposed by China. Sky's Asia correspondent Tom Cheshire has this report. This is the moment police came for a former Hong Kong legislator. All across the city, more doors were being knocked on, more charges read out. The crackdown had begun. More than a 1,000 police officers moved to arrest scores of pro-democracy activists. This was the biggest operation to date under the national security law, imposed by Beijing on Hong Kong last year. Many had feared the law's sweeping powers, and these were sweeping arrests. Arrests that included the first foreigner to be detained under the law, a US human rights lawyer. Continue to work for democracy and human rights in Hong Kong. The charge? subverting state power. We are finding some people have been um, uh, uh, seriously interfering and disrupting and undermining the operation of the Hong Kong government. That should be enjoyed by Hong Kong people. The allegedly subversive plan was this, to win more than 35 seats, a majority, in elections for the Legislative Council, Hong Kong's parliament. Everyone arrested today was involved in these primaries, held last July to choose pro-democracy candidates ahead of the elections. Some candidates have promised that if they won a majority, they would reject bills proposed by the government and veto its budget. Many would call that the job of an opposition in an elected chamber. In Beijing, the Chinese state called it subversion. The rights and freedom Hong Kong people enjoyed have not been affected in any way. What was affected was that some external forces and individuals in Hong Kong colluded with each other in an attempt to undermine the stability and security of China. The few pro-democracy politicians who hadn't been arrested gathered together. It is really an affront to the constitutionally protected rights to vote of Hong Kong people. And this is totally unacceptable. The Chinese Communist Party once described the national security law as a sword hanging over Hong Kong. Today, it looked more like a hammer. Tom Cheshire, Sky News, Beijing. Let's get more on this now. And joining me is the former British governor of uh, Hong Kong, the last governor of Hong Kong, Lord Patton. Thank you for being with us. Uh, first of all, how concerned are you by these arrests? Very concerned, not wholly surprised, but this is what people in Hong Kong have called the white terror. And um, this is a further turning of the screw uh, in Hong Kong, a further attempt to destroy uh, the freedoms of a city which has thrived under the rule of law. Uh, and I was very pleased that Dominic Raab today pointed out that this makes a mockery of the already pretty ridiculous arguments that were being made for the national security law. The people who've been arrested um, aren't radicals. They're not, they haven't been guilty of violence. Uh, they're lawyers, they're academics, they're social workers. Uh, they're people who tried to organize last year, um, and did organize indeed, um, a vote to choose um, the best candidates for the elections which were then postponed, uh, arguably uh, because of COVID. Um, 600,000 people voted in those um, elections, in that primary election. And for that, for organizing that, these people have been arrested. They've been arrested because they believe in democracy. They believe they believed once, perhaps, in the promises that Hong Kong, Hong, Kong, Hong Kong was made by the Chinese Communist Party. And as we see right across the board, whether it's Xinjiang or whether it's the coronavirus, um, the Chinese Communist Party is lying through its teeth. Ministers, spokesmen, and what's happening in Hong Kong. Hong Kong's being run now by the vice premier of China, who spends a lot of time in yeah. Shenzhen in somewhere called a villa in order to run Hong Kong. And it's an outrage. Right, I mean, but they were warned. Carrie Lam, the leader, had said that these primaries, I suppose you could call them, uh, could amount to subversion. Well, there was subversion, according to the um, egregious Quisling, who's the Secretary for Security. Um, they were subversion because what people wanted to do in the legislature was for vo to vote for what they believed in. And they pointed out that that would sometimes be against the government. Um, and that's what's called democracy. Um, you, you have a legislative council where people can vote for or against. There wasn't much chance of them winning because 
Beijing and uh, Carrie Lam and her colleagues were trying to make sure that that couldn't happen by stuffing um, the Legislative Council. Uh, and anyway, we now know that those Legislative Council elections aren't going to take place because the Chinese Communist Party thought that uh, the Democrats would do very well. Um, but nevertheless, these arrests have taken place and there are further, as I said, there are further assault on the freedoms of Hong Kong and a further reminder that you cannot trust the Chinese Communist Party. I distinguish between China and the Chinese Communist Party, which is a very nasty regime. Is this the death of any sort of democracy in Hong Kong? I mean, they've snuffed out the protests. Now they seem to be uh, trying to snuff out, you know, what uh, passes for democracy. I mean, the Chinese have won, haven't they? Well, for the time being, they're managing to lock people up and shut them up. Uh, and uh, a, a, a great um, American sinologist called uh, the, the Chinese way of, of running places as being like the anaconda in the chandelier. You don't know quite when it's going to happen, but sooner or later, um, if you do what they don't like, the cobra will land on your head. Uh, and that's what's been happening in Hong Kong. It's why it's called, to use another metaphor or simile, it's why it's called the white terror. Um, but if, you, if they think they can actually lock up the idea of freedom and democracy forever, they're kidding themselves. The truth is they're absolutely terrified of what liberal democracies stand for. They're absolutely terrified of things like um, accountability, the rule of law. They believe in rule of laws and laws which they pass and which are passed and then adjudicated by judges of whom they appoint. Of they mm. appoint. And then we have to watch for is their attempts to actually undermine the independence of the judiciary in Hong Kong. They're already trying to do that. And I, I tell you now, they will do it even more in the next few weeks. Well, what, can't, what can be done? I mean, the British government can't really do much. The EU is signing investment deals and have got big trade uh, agreements with China. The US is, what, distracted, to say the least. What can be done? Well, the first thing to point out um, is that we've got now an American president, I hope, um, uh, Joe Biden, and the News for Georgia seem to confirm that today, um, who wants to build a partnership of liberal democracies which will be prepared to stand up to China and constrain China's loutish behaviour. It's bullying. Um, we should be standing by Australia and others who are bullied by China. We should be standing up to China, not just over, uh, over what's happening in Hong Kong, but the, what amounts to genocide in Xinjiang. I think it is extraordinary and a, and a spectacular blunder um, in terms of geostrategy by the European Commission at the moment to talk about signing this deal, uh, this investment and trade deal with uh, China. Um, first of all, it's a triumph of hope over experience. The idea that the Chinese are going to keep to their word on issues like rules of origin uh, and uh, uh, joint ventures and investment today when they haven't for the last 20 odd years. I, I, I negotiated with them on these things back in the early 2000s. Secondly, the idea that they will also um, in, implement the international labor organization standards, which the European Union says they're going to do, is for the birds. There's forced labor in Xinjiang. The idea that you're going to have trade unionists um, able to uh, ask for more pay and demonstrate in China is absolutely ludicrous. It's delusional. And it's right. particularly stupid of Europe to do this at a time when they should be looking at ways of working with a new American administration to repair science and to deal with an issue which is of concern to all liberal democracies everywhere. We don't want to have a Cold War with China, but if China attacks our values, we have to stand up for ourselves. OK, and in just 20 seconds, I mean, how do you see this panning out? If they get long sentences... It, it is over, isn't it? No, I don't think it's, it's over, because I don't think that uh, Chinese communism, the, 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 this regime, are going to destroy things which so many people around the world believe in. Uh, and uh, the fact that these people are prepared to go to prison because of their beliefs is sim simply underlines the fact that ideas are a lot more powerful than uh, handcuffs and chains. OK, uh, Lord Patton, appreciate your time. Thanks very much indeed. Thank